This is the Samsung Galaxy F23 5G disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Next, we need to apply heat to the back plate to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're going to use the plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here's a look at the plastic back plate. The plastic frame holding the glass camera lens covers is held in place with some clips. The glass camera lens covers are held in place with adhesive, so if you need to replace those, you could just apply heat and gently pry them off. Next, the flex cable for the fingerprint reader needs to be disconnected. At this point, there are 17 Phillips screws that need to be removed. Once the screws are removed, we need to place a plastic pry tool in between the back housing and the frame of the screen, and then we need to run it along the edges to pop off the catches. The back housing is also made of plastic. There are antenna flex cables on the top and bottom, and then FC antenna is located on the top center. On the other side, we can see the other ends of the flex cables for the antenna, as well as a layer of graphite to help transfer heat. And the speaker is located on the bottom corner. Once we have access to the battery cable, we need to disconnect that first. Once the battery cable is disconnected, we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the flex cables. So if you need to replace your screen, you'd have to remove the back plate and then the screws in the back housing. Then you'd have to disconnect the battery cable and this flex cable, as well as the flex cable on the bottom connecting the subboard to the main board. You'd then heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry your old screen off, apply a new adhesive, and then you'd reapply your new screen, making sure you run both flex cables back to the openings in the mid frame, and then you reassemble your phone. So moving on, there are two coaxial cables on the bottom right side of the board that need to be disconnected by popping them off. Next, the front-facing camera can be disconnected and removed. Here's a better look at the front-facing 8 megapixel camera. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the main board that needs to be removed. Now we can lift up and remove the main board. On the main board, there's an 8 megapixel ultra-wide lens, a 50 megapixel main lens, and a 2 megapixel macro lens. The camera cables can be disconnected by just popping them off and none of the cameras have OIS or optical image stabilization. The LED flash is located here, and there are rubber gaskets around the connectors. The SIM card and memory card reader is located on the back, and there's a secondary microphone located on top. There's also graphite film on the back shield to help transfer heat. Once that's peeled off, there's some thermal paste on top of the Snapdragon 750G processor. Here's a better look with the thermal paste removed. Now the flex cable connecting the subboard to the main board as well as the two other ends of the coaxial cable need to be disconnected from the subboard. And then there's a single Phillips screw which is holding out the subboard that needs to be removed. Now the subboard can be lifted up and removed. Here's a look at the charger port and headphone jack. The primary microphone is located on the other side. In order to remove the battery, there are no pull tabs provided to help us pry it off, so we're going to have to apply some isopropyl alcohol around the edges of the battery and let it sit there for about 30 seconds, so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. Here's a better look at the 5000 mAh battery. Once the battery is removed, and the protective tape is peeled off, we have a better look at the copper heat pipe, which runs underneath the battery, as well as the motherboard. There's also a thermal pad on the frame, which sits in between the frame and the bottom of the motherboard, which helps transfer heat more efficiently. The flex cable for the volume key is located on the side and is held on some adhesive, so if you want to replace that, you have to gently pry it off. The same goes for the vibrator motor, which is located on the bottom right, and the AP speaker is located on the top. There are also two liquid damage indicator stickers on this phone. One is located underneath the SIM reader and SIM tray on the frame, and the other one next to the charger port. 
For the repairability score, I give this phone a 6 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply a backplate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.